so for most of my life, yeah, we didn't really have a relationship. I knew where he was, sort of. I knew he was in Chicago, but I didn't really um, have any kind of geographical awareness of where he was. I didn't have any kind of predictable, um, uh, I guess, meetings with him at all. So what did your mother tell you about him? What was, did you have a certain story that you were raised with? No, no. And so that was part of this is I never really grew up with anything. I never grew up with any kind of stories, good or bad. I just kind of, it was just one of those things we didn't talk about. Hi friends, welcome back to Really Famous. How great is Danny Pudi? If you watch Community, you love him. There's no question, you simply do. Danny plays the utterly wonderful and entertaining human being, Abed. He's also on the new Apple TV Plus series, Mythic Quest, and he's the voice of Huey in Disney's DuckTales. Recently, Danny created a new autobiographical film called Running. It just came out and you can catch it right now on Stellar TV. I put a link in the show notes and it'll be available through Stellar's streaming platform through February 26th. So Running is a totally intriguing and personal film that if you like my show, you will definitely be into seeing it because it uncovers Danny's story of growing up with an estranged father. In a minute, you'll hear us talk about it. It's a riveting story, but I won't give anything else away. If you would like to watch Danny and me instead of listen to the pod, you can do that right now on my YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash really famous. Remember to tap that notifications bell after you subscribe so you're notified every time I drop a new video. You can also get links to Danny's shows by visiting my Amazon storefront, which is a fabulous way to support Really Famous, by the way. Every time you go to Amazon through my special link, amazon.com slash shop slash really famous, you help support the show. When you buy something, anything really, your usual suspects or my personal recommendations like Molly Shannon's upcoming memoir, Hello Molly, which I am obsessed with, or a new flat screen TV, or even dog treats. Amazon sends us a little advertising fee. So yes, next time you need something on Amazon, simply use my link to get there and boom, you're a really famous contributor. So here's the backstory with Danny. Well, there actually isn't much of one. It was super smooth, an easy setup. He showed up at exactly the minute I was expecting him. And just like that, we were having a great talk. Super easy. Super good guy. I think you'll like him. I really don't know. It's so funny that we're talking about this because the technical side of everything is my, like, I, it is my blind spot. And here we are. I know. Well, you could probably, for me, I know a lot of those things that people point out to me. I don't necessarily see them right away, but I feel them. I find myself, like, I'm just thinking of, like, a technical thing that I do. Like, I'll, uh, I make a noise. Like, I think my wife alerted me to this noise that I make sometimes when I'm smiling to like, I think it's to replicate a natural smile, but it's like a noise that I kind of quietly do. Um, and I never really knew that, but it's, I think it's that too, because I knew that that's like the, the thing I need, it's like sort of the trigger I need to, in order to be like, okay, here we go. So, <laughs> you know, it's like, so I kind of feel like maybe it's, it's a little bit of that. So that was the noise that you just did that. Mm. I, I mean, I think I, I enhanced it a little bit, but I think, I think it's, yeah, I think it's something like that. That is so funny. So are you, I mean, <laughs> you've been on camera for so many years. Are you like totally used yeah. to it? Or are you still very self-aware when you're being filmed? That's a good question. Uh, I think it depends on what it is. You know, I, this uh, Zoom is always interesting because you're seeing yourself, which is weird. So you're very self-aware. I'm very self-aware of that because I'm looking at myself and then I'm like, am I supposed to look at me? Or am I supposed to look at you or that green dot? It's, 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 uh, you know, I'm, I'm used to it a little bit now over the last year, you know, talking to yeah. people over Zoom, um, kind of getting out of my head a little bit, but that's different. You know, when I'm acting, it's the goal is to not do that. The goal is right. to just kind of be present in the scene and talking to someone. And boy, does it feel really good when I'm not thinking about my face and if my eyebrows are doing anything weird. But occasionally that happens for sure uh, when, 
you know, I try not to watch like playback. A lot of times, um, you know, sometimes the uh, directors or people will allow you to see a scene after you filmed it. And, and I try not to too much because I become really self-aware about maybe things that I'm doing or faces that I'm making. Um, you know, so, um, but when I'm acting, it's a lot better. When I'm actually present in a scene with a human being, uh, I can kind of get over that. Yeah. Sometimes though it creeps in. Yeah. Yeah. I would imagine you really do need to let go of that when you're filming, but like, I, it is such an awkward thing with zoom. I think it's really bad that we can see ourselves. Like, I, I agree. I, and I don't even think there's an option to not see yourself. Right. I mean, you can kind of put yourself smaller, I think, but I don't even think you could just remove yourself. I don't, know. I, don't I don't know what you could do. I know you could like enhance yourself and you could yeah. blur things out and you could do cool beaches behind you or be on a roller coaster. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but I agree. It's very strange. It's mm -hmm. just strange to watch yourself, you know? Yeah. Um, you can't, I don't know. I, I, at least I can't help but then look at myself and be like, my, my hands, should they be lower? Yeah. I, right. <laughs> just, there's just a lot of it. Yeah. I totally get it. Well, that's why I also, I really prefer to do interviews in person. So not only do I just like being with people. So I would rather be sitting right next to you on that. What is that little casual sofa behind you or something? That would yeah, be perfect. I, I would love I that. I agree. Aww. But it, it is what it is. But that's part of it too, is then if we're on the sofa talking, we're not looking at ourselves. We're only looking at the other person, which is a benefit. And that's how human communication probably should be, ideally. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you can kind of forget, at least I know I can forget when I'm, when I'm actually with another person, I can just forget about myself a little bit more, which is yeah. always, a good, I think always a good thing. Always a good thing. Those are the best conversations yeah. too. When you forget, you yeah. don't even, you're not so self-aware. Self-aware is good for certain things, oh. but not for those little kinds of things. I remember when yes. I first started filming the show, cause at first it started as just a podcast. So it was audio only. So for a long time, I just had a voice recorder. That was it. Mm. And then once we put a camera up, I would look and be like, oh my God, my posture is outrageously bad. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm hunched over go. like this there because I'm comfy. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but it doesn't I'm matter in Zoom. You could be hunched over in Zoom. It's in person that that's a problem. You're right. You're right. But then I'm trying to like model your posture. You know, I'm like, oh, sure. gosh, here we go. Kara has great posture. I better model it. You know, I've been working <laughs> with my trainer actually with, on specifically my posture because I tend to go like this. I tend to hunch a little bit. And I'm like, oh, yeah, this feels so much better when I'm like this. But it doesn't feel natural, which is weird. Right. So what are you working on? Like, how is he or she getting you to work on the posture? Uh, we do a lot of like uh, deadlifts, you know, we'll do a lot of deadlifting. We'll do a lot of stuff with these TRX bands against the wall where I'll be like position. And I'm just like specifically trying to, you know, work on that, drop my shoulders down and my back. I know it's good for me. Um, I run a lot. And so he'll have me do a lot of specific exercises to help with running form, which is part of that. And yes, yeah, so we'll do a lot of like planks and uh, just a lot of specific back stuff, you know, and dropping the shoulders back. And it's just interesting because I, I know when I'm doing it wrong, when someone will tell me, be like, hey, drop your shoulders. And I'll be like, oh, yeah, that is it. That feels good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's an option for me. Like, you know, but I right. just will forget and I'll end up being like this during the day or whatever, you know, and then you're just like, oh, yeah, this is. Uh, so I have to work at that for sure. And he's helping me a lot with that. Okay, that's very good. So you do, mm -hmm. so you've run your whole life, right? I think I read this about you. You've been a runner your whole life. And then your new film is called Running. So it's called, yeah, yeah, I guess uh, it is, um, it's a title that is very personal to me because, yeah, I started running in high school, actually. Um, I started doing track and field and I didn't really love it, but there was something that came out of that, which was really good in that I just really began to find peace in running and I would just kind of go to the park or, you know, and I slowly build on distances and it, it just find it was like a place I could always go to by myself with my thoughts and, and, um, just feel better, always feel better after, after a run. And so I just continued on through college and then my wife and I have continued to run. We've run marathons together and, um, it's something I continue every day. Now I just do it. It's, it's almost less uh, for the physical benefits and more for the mental benefits for me. And I guess it's a combination of the two, but it's definitely grown to becoming way more of a mental benefit to me and just overall just kind of a nice way to ground my day. And um, 
we use that as sort of this metaphor in the in the show and that like all the different things that I think about when I'm running and all the different things that I try to um, let go of when I'm running. And so um, it felt like kind of a, a good title. And then, you know, eventually we had to actually just commit to the title because we couldn't find a better title and they were already marketing the show. So we we're like, all right, let's just stick with uh, <laughs> But it sounds good because it also is meaningful to you in your personal life because it's been that grounding force for you. So I haven't seen the film, but I, I, will, I can't wait to see it. And it sounds really uh, interesting. So the story about your parents, right? Your mother, um, is this true? Your mother this is what I read. Your mother's Polish yeah. and your yeah. father's Indian. And they met yeah. in ESL class. Is that true? They did. So I was part of the story is that both my parents are uh, immigrated to, to America, to Chicago specifically in the 1970s. And yes, my mother was born in Poland. My father was born in India. And they met at um, this YMCA where both of them were taking classes. They didn't meet in the actual class, but they were both taking ESL mm -hmm. classes. And um, it was fun because the part of this story was me asking questions, specific questions about how they met and how they got together, things that I actually never knew. So during this process, I actually learned that they met in the library at the YMCA while they were both studying um, and um, learning English, you know? So um, it, was, it was kind of a, a fun way to kind of like just learn more about my family, but also uh, it started really because I didn't have uh, a lot of answers to how my family kind of came to be. I didn't grow up with my father and I reconnected with him later in my life. Um, and just because of that, I realized there was a lot of things I just didn't know about him or my parents um, or my own childhood, uh, just because I never really asked. Okay, that's so interesting. So I do feel yeah. like, right, child, I, I'm just going to give you a little disclaimer. So I used to be a therapist okay. before I did this. Okay. So I'm very interested in like the human experience and family yeah. and all of that. So um, this is cool. interesting to me. So you grew okay. up with your mom, but where was your dad? Yeah. So was he kind of absent or did you see him from time to time? Like, what was that like? So yeah, that was part of the the interesting thing about exploring this story. So I always knew my dad was somewhere. I, did, I actually never knew really where he was exactly. He lived in Chicago uh, in a different neighborhood. My parents separated when I was about two years old. And I saw him a handful of times when I was a child, um, just a couple of times. And I really didn't actually have any kind of relationship with him um, other than maybe a couple of times where we saw each other at some family gatherings and a couple phone calls. And so not until I was much older, just recently, actually, um, over the past five years that we actually reconnect. And a large part uh, of that was because I became a father myself and I decided um, it was the right time to to figure things out, you know. And so um, so for most of my life, yeah, we didn't really have a relationship. I knew where he was sort of. I knew he was in Chicago, but I didn't really. Um, have any kind of geograph geographical awareness of where he was. I didn't have any kind of predictable, um, uh, I guess, meetings with him at all. So what did your mother tell you about him? What was, did you have a certain story that you were raised with? No, no. And so that was part of this is I never really grew up with anything. I never grew up with any kind of stories, good or bad. I just kind of, it was just one of those things we didn't talk about, you know? And, you know, I grew up with my mom, but she was a single mom, raising three kids, working two jobs, going to school. She, um, I, I mean, she, she's a force. She's amazing. And, but we, so she wasn't really home a lot and we just didn't talk about it. And I grew up actually with my grandparents from Poland. And so my childhood was spent like sitting at home, you know, um, uh, speaking Polish, uh, going to Polish school. Um, and we just, it was almost kind of like a rule. We just didn't really communicate about my dad. And, but, you know, I'm clearly uh, all very Indian, <laughs> you know, and I knew that he was there somewhere. And I just always had this sort of like these questions in the back of my mind, sure. wondering like where he was and yeah. what he was doing. And um, it was just something we just didn't really talk about, you know. So that's interesting. So do your siblings also, do they resemble your father? Like, do they f look and feel Indian as well? Yeah, I, I mean, that's something I, I would have to ask them. I mean, I think we've all, we all, I mean, you know, we definitely look more Indian probably than Polish, I would uh -huh. say. And so that was something that was always interesting for me growing up is that inside our house, I felt very much 
uh, I grew up culturally Polish and American, but then when I would go out, step outside or go to school, I right. was um, clearly presenting as something else. And that to me was interesting because there were no other Indian American families in my school or, or neighborhood really. And uh, so that was always kind of like a, I guess, questions. And I, and, and I had questions about my identity and a struggle for me growing up that I knew that when I would step outside, I would, not that there were these expectations, but I always felt like I would be reminded of my father and my past and this whole other world that I just didn't really know much about. And um, it was almost like living two lives, you know? Yeah, that's so interesting. I can't imagine what that was like. Did you talk to your siblings about it? Like, or was it totally, nobody talked about anything? Really, really <laughs> nobody, no, nobody. We're, we have a, a very special bond, but I think we all dealt with it in different ways. Sure. You know, my, my way of handling that sort of, um, you know, living with, you know, the absence of a father and, uh, you know, you know, dealing with these identity issues was always like performance and comedy and theater and like storytelling. And that way always was a place for me to kind of go and be like, I could step on stage and I could, you know, put on whatever mask or costume and I could, you know, find peace in that. And that was all, that was sort of where I, I realized growing up, I was like, oh, this is how I, I love doing this because a part of it is processing and it's just kind of like where my passion is, is to, to figure out who people are, you know? Um, but my sister and my brother, I think they dealt with it in their own ways. And I think not until we were a little bit older, did we actually like start to be really kind of like, like talk about it more, you know? Um, and, and realize that each of us were, you know, dealing with this in different ways. But I think just because of, um, our house and our lives. We just didn't really communicate about it very much growing up. Not, and it's it's nice to kind of now have time to, when we're growing up a little bit, to be like, yeah, that was weird. <laughs> yeah. Certain things were really weird growing up. Yeah, yeah. Well, you were kind of taught that, that it's not something to talk about. So why would you all talk about it? Because that's how you were raised. It's like, this just isn't something we address. Yeah, yeah. And so there's no, like, there was no real map for that, you mm -hmm. know? Uh, you know, and that's part of the story that I was exploring, too, is that I realized when my kids would ask me questions, like point blank, uh, how they were very simple questions. They would ask me questions like, oh, like, when's your dad's birthday? And I'd be like, that's a good question. But then it would make me feel uncomfortable that I don't know my dad's birthday. Right. And then I'd realize, like, how come I, you know, how do I, how do I explain this to my kids? And what else is this unpacking within me? And then I would just be like, like a robot. That's like, you know, like, you know, um, that's, that's kind of like, you know, fitting out. It's like, you know, it's like what, and, and just from a simple question, you know, and I think that was like really kind of something really interesting to me is how, how much I didn't, uh, how much I buried and how much I, I personally didn't deal with. Uh, that was just very like logical, simple questions, you know, uh -huh. um, and because we didn't talk about it, you know, little things yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. So that's so interesting. So when you, so it was definitely your kids then. you have twins, right? I have twins. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's definitely when yeah. they got to the age of being curious about those things that they would naturally be curious about. But obviously if they're asking you questions point blank, then you aren't raising them in a similar way. Like, you know what I mean? So that just shows that they are being raised in a different kind of environment than you were. So that's yes. interesting too. Did you ever, did yes. you consciously do that? Like were you, oh, I, think so. more I, think a, I think a large part of that is that my wife, um, who was an educator and I think her family is way they're, they're I think they're better communicators in some ways They're or at least they grew up with a little bit more of that communication was, um, at home. They talked about, talked more about certain things, you know, our family is different and, every like every family right and i think that is something that she's instilled in our children and that openness and that's just been really interesting to see how that's kind of now uh, helped me open up but it's mm -hmm. also like helped my kids and it's also interesting to see how you uh, being surprised i'm surprised more now uh about my own childhood uh -huh. just because no one's really point blank asked me certain questions that are uh, that your kids do, you know, the kids, you know, um, you know, my daughter asked, like, how did your parents come to be divorced? And 
it's just interesting when it comes from your children, because then you really have to be like, oh, whoa, I got to actually figure out how to tell this story to you. But it's tricky when I actually don't really know. And that was part of this right. journey, too, is like really trying to figure out that how much I, I haven't myself processed so much of this this story. And, um, and in many ways, too, I think my own family and other people around me, the people who are close to me, they don't ask those questions because I think they know there's this sort of like place that we don't go. Yeah. You know, um, and there's just a kind of a beautiful wonder with, with kids where they're just like, I just want to know there's this, this, you know, and that, so it would, it catches me off guard from time to time. Um, right. but I know it's, it's, it's good. It's, a, it's, it's for the best, you know? Yeah. So that's interesting too, because I also feel like, um, a lot of, comedians or comedic actors, right, have that, that's part of what, I don't know if it's a drive or whatever, where you can kind of remove yourself from yeah. whatever immediate situation is. So I could see where that would help you as well. And it probably it has been good for your career, you know, whatever, to some degree, I'm sure that's not everything, but maybe it helps fuel it or whatever, like you said at the beginning. But I, I just want to go back for a second. So that makes me wonder yeah. too. So when you so you're because your wife grew up in a family that communicates and talks about things. So when you first got in a, a relationship with her, was it a weird change for you that she expected to talk about things and it was not something you were used to? Yeah, yeah, uh, which is great. It's great for me. I just realized how um, it's a whole side of me that I'm, I, I'm growing and learning and and uh, but yeah, I think you hit on all those things is that I grew up in performance and I grew up in a in a household, an immigrant household where it was just different. There was different priorities. There are other things that we were um, dealing with. And um, and so to see, to see things from my wife's perspective, it's been really wonderful to to kind of be able to, like, see my life from a different point of view and and also know that there is like, um, I don't know, there's, there's just ways for me to to help understand my own family story um, and, and to, just to get better as a communicator. I think that's been really helpful with her, but um, it's the same thing with my children. Like she'll ask questions that are direct and sometimes I'll feel like they're like, like uh, they're like an attack, yeah, but I realize yeah. it's just a question. Um, but it takes, it, it kind of, it takes me a moment to be like, it's just a question. She just wants to know. Right. Um, but I just didn't grow up like that. Um, questions weren't like a, um, you just kind of didn't ask questions like that. You, you yeah. know, you kind of didn't, ask, you didn't really, we didn't really talk about the past. Um, and for good reason, I think, you know, for a lot of people in my family, they went through things that were, you know, um, that were very hard and very difficult. And so I could, I could almost feel that growing up mm -hmm. and I didn't want to add to that stress, you know, um, but at the same time, you know, now it's nice to be able to actually talk about it with someone to be like, oh, yeah, this this was stuff that really was uh, impactful in my life. And, you know, of course, then it impacts our relationship. And so um, I'm glad I'm glad she pushes me and she has continued to push me. And, um, you know, hopefully we can continue to do that with our kids. And um, but, yeah, that's been a, a, a thing that I've been working on. <laughs> As, as a person, as a father, as a husband, uh -huh. uh, I wouldn't say it's it's entirely comfortable for me at all times, uh -huh. but um, I, you know, it's a uh, it's a good challenge for me for sure. Definitely, and that's good. I mean, it's good. I feel like to be evolving and growing in these ways. It, like you don't have to do all your growing as a child. So it's interesting. You had like two uh -huh. possibilities too, right? You could have just shut it down and been like, "This is just not how I work, how I operate." or like you're taking it as this is a healthy thing and I'm gonna go there with her and with the kids and with myself, it's really a gift. You're a, it's like you're going through a growth spurt in a way. Uh, thanks. <laughs> I, I think so, I think it is. And I think it's interesting for a lot of my, the way I process is a lot of it has been through like character. I love characters. I love understanding how a character um, tick like what makes them tick what makes a person uh behave this a certain way what what happened to a person that impacted their actions years later you know so that's kind of how i, I approach things as an actor and so it's been interesting for me as a person to dive into this story and have to sort of like kind of distance myself a little bit and be mm -hmm. like hey this isn't just acting this is actually like your life too 
Um, but at the same time, I, I realized how interested I am in finding things out uh, and just as a person about like my dad or me and how important it was for me to actually just learn more about uh, just some basic uh, things about my father just to help understand him as a person, uh, which I knew was really helpful to understand me and, you know, why I am like sometimes so bewildered as a father. And I, and I think some of that is for me just kind of making sense of like why, who I am today, um, you know, as a father, as a husband, and, and why I chose to be an actor, how much of that I, I guess I was kind of like, you know, just pulling the strings of being like, how much of that was actually because of my childhood? Like how much of that was based right. on my parents and my upbringing? And um, in some ways it's kind of like my, um, it was like an academic project in some ways, oh, okay. as well as like a, a, a healing project, I think both, but yeah. So interesting. So when did you decide, so how, well, I guess the question really is, when did you meet up with him later? You said that you kind of reconnected with him as an adult. So what, what spurred that on? So I kept putting it off. You know, I realized uh, I, I had some opportunities to meet up with him, but I just, I just never felt ready. I just never felt ready and, or I made excuses why I wasn't ready. And, um, but I think uh, the, my children obviously were a tremendous help uh, with that. Just, just realizing I didn't have a lot of answers, questions that I wanted to have myself. So it wasn't just their questions, it was my own questions as well. I wanted to learn more about him. And I think I think being a father uh, helped. And I think also, I guess the distance too. I live in LA and my father lived in Chicago. And so there was a safety net there where I knew like, okay, the next time I go to Chicago, that's kind of how it first started. Oh, okay. I was like, I could I can meet with him safely and just feel what this is going to feel like. Um, I waited a long time um, until I felt like I was properly armored. You know, uh, once I had chosen a career, I was an actor. I had kids. Uh -huh. I was married. I felt I I think I created enough armor around me where I felt like I could enter this situation, this unknown situation, and and feel okay. I feel okay, no matter what happens. Um, I think I was surprised by that first meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, left with more questions, um, more curious, and that kind of just led led to more of a reconnection, you know? But it was the curiosity. I think I've lived my whole life pretending I wasn't curious about it or I didn't have questions oh. about him or wondering where he was, but I really did want to mm -hmm. know, like, what is up with this guy? Why is my family not talking about this whole section in our family history and i just want to know i just want to know more you know and i think that curiosity also was part of it as well okay so what were you afraid of that you felt like the armor would protect you against what did you have these scenarios in your head of what might happen or what you would find out yes yeah i just uh it's interesting because we because we didn't talk about my dad much i just didn't know what kind of person he would be or how I would feel in a room with him. And I think I harbored a lot of resentment. I felt I got, you know, there was a lot of anger and there was a lot of that. And so, you know, and in some ways I, I felt hurt. I felt hurt for myself, but also for my mom. I was very protective of her and I didn't want all of a sudden, you know, hurt, uh, hurt my family by, you know, by jumping in the middle of this situation too. So there's all that. Um, but I just, I guess not knowing how I would feel in the moment, like what that would be like, uh, what he might say. Um, I think there was just all these, you know, um, uh, this uncertainty. And so I was like, I, I just need to kind of just walk into a room unscripted and just kind of see what happens. Mm -hmm. And for a start, you know, and then after that, I was just like, great. Now I got a list of questions we got to get. We got to oh, get some answers. Sweet. Nice, nice. <laughs> yeah. So I yeah. know it's obviously the whole film is about this, right? So the film is about you yeah. having these interviews. Am I right? I mean, I don't want to describe it incorrectly. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're having these talks yeah. with him. You're asking him all these questions. Yeah. So I don't want to boil it down to just one question, but what did you find out? I mean, I guess I am asking you that one question. So what did you find out or yeah. why did, what did you find out about why you didn't know anything about him and why he wasn't? with you growing up? I don't know if I ever got a real great answer. Oh. And I think that's what I found out is that I really wanted, 
like specific answers and um, thinking that I could make sense of this uh, with just like a clear answer. And I, I think it's, I guess one of the lessons I learned was just to ask questions was uh, very difficult for me. Just to ask questions about my childhood, about my parents. Uh, I realized how, uh, how difficult that was for me just to, to open up certain topics. And that to me felt uh, like a win in some ways, just to be able to ask a question. Okay. But also it was really hard. And it still is hard to not have answers to all the questions. So I don't think I ever really like pinpointed exactly all the reasons why my father left or um, how our family came to be. But I felt a lot better being able to ask those questions and being able to now face the questions for my children, knowing that there not, might not be answers to all these questions. Uh, but I know at least some basic things. I know his birthday is June 3rd. <laughs> you know, uh -huh. I could, you know, there are things like that. I know, um, you know, I, I learned some stories about when he came to America, what that was like. I know his, um, his, um, one of his favorite movies. I know things like that now, which are just, just help build him more as a person versus just sort of this, uh, it definitely humanized him more, which mm -hmm. I think has been really helpful for me. And, um, uh, I, I think just kind of got rid of this sort of weird mystery that was in the back of my mind. Yeah. You know, plus it gave that, you that agency. Yeah. It, it gave you agency, like the feeling that you're not just, you have no control over anything either. Like at least you can take the steps to ask these questions, even if you don't get the answers. Yeah. 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 I think that's, that's really it. And yeah, because I think at first I was just like immobilized by any question mm -hmm. about my dad or just anything uh, about him. You know, I, I remember years ago. Um, so there was, I have a few moments and some of these stories are in the, the film where I would hear about my dad or I, and it was just very rare, but like there was a moment in my life where I ran into this professor at this, um, yeah, at this in this, I was taking the summer summer class, and one of the professors was like, "Hey, Pooty, your last name? Oh, I think I know your dad." And he he's like, "Great guy, you know, I worked with him in this thing, and my father worked in mental health, and um, wow. and they had worked together in this in this hospital in Chicago, and that had like never happened to me before. No one had ever, and it was just kind of like one of those moments where I remember just being like." I, I just don't know what to say. No one at, at that point had ever said they knew my dad. No one at that point had ever said my dad was a great guy. And no one ever, ever told me what his work was. There was all these things that happened in this one quick conversation that like just shut me down, you know? Yeah. And it was just kind of this, I had these flashes every once in a while growing up or things like that would happen. And I would be like, oh, whoa, okay. There's this thing that I haven't dealt with that at some point I feel like maybe I should. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But then, you know, I just was like, Let's go do improv. <laughs> Let's go right. do some comedy. Right. Ooh, that feels so much better now. Sure, but, you know, absolutely. Yeah, I'll pretend I'm, you know, Super Mario, and we'll, you know, have a good time. You know, That's so I'm so interested by the fact that he was in mental health. So interesting. Yeah. yeah. What do you yeah. do? Well, so he worked uh, in many capacities. He worked. He worked at this hospital called Illinois Masonic in Chicago, and I think they've actually changed their name to advocate i believe i'm not really sure but it's in this neighborhood called lakeview and he actually lived right around the corner from there and he worked there for 30 years and that was part of this too, story too is that i ended up meeting a couple of his close co-workers and friends um after he passed away and that's when i really started to learn more about him at really actually after he passed away is because some of the his close friends started to share stories with me about him mm -hmm. and that was really just fascinating, you know? So anyways, he worked as um, the unit concierge in this hospital. He worked as a transporter, as a mental health counselor for a while in this unit. And so he worked in for 30 years in this unit uh, dealing with mental health. So, yeah. How interesting. Okay, so yeah. that definitely explains also how you, or you love to go into improv. You're like, yeah, this is it for me. This is like, it must've felt so good. and like so much easier to deal with, but then you could channel it too. So it is kind of the best of both in a way, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's freeing. There's a free, like, there's a, there's just, you know, it's liberating to be able to just go up on stage and, 
and build a character from the ground up, just build a character, take things here and there and just build this world and tell this story and then just kind of throw it all away, you know, yeah. and then move on. There's something really freeing about that. Uh, but yeah, at the same time, you know, as an actor, I'm always like fascinated by more and more. I just, I love acting so much. It's my passion. And more and more, I'm just fascinated by how people um, behave the way they do and, you know, all the different layers that people have. And so it felt like I was ignoring, you know, one of the biggest characters in my life, my whole life, which is my dad. And I never really dug into him as a person and who he was because we didn't have those conversations as a kid sitting on the couch. We never had those kind of moments where you're like, oh, this is kind of who my father is, or this is, uh, this is one of his favorite quotes. I didn't have any of that kind of stuff. So I was mm -hmm. kind of like building up the layers of who he was uh, just to learn. And that was just fascinating for me, it really was. Right, so I'm also interested too, like is, do you feel like part of his personality, you know, people sometimes take after their parents a little bit or one parent more than the other. Like, did you discover, yeah. oh, this is somewhat, in a way I'm learning more about this is my tendency and it's kind of like him or not none of that at all? Uh, a little bit. It's funny because I think in some ways actually the reverse happened where I started seeing myself and my mom more. <laughs> Oh, interesting. Where I was like, oh, this is, that's interesting. Because uh, I would start, because of this process too, I had started talking to my mom about it. Oh. I, you know, um, and I realized how much of my tendencies are like my mom's. Like really, like a lot of her, um, how she approaches things. You know, she's, um, I think both of us are very much like, I tend uh to dive into work. I love, I love work. I love getting in to a project and that helps me um, process, but also gives me a place to go when I'm not really sure what, what to do. And I think my mom is like that too. She's always gardening. She's fixing things. She is, um, she's just an incredibly inspiring person. So she's always moving forward. And I think I've modeled a lot of what I do after her. And I, I, I guess I just never really connected as much of that. Um, yeah until now, you know, so there's a lot of things like that, um, that I've found myself uh, seeing myself in my mom, but also seeing myself in my father, too, when people, people will tell me that, you know, now some of his friends will say certain things, or they'll be like, you know, um, you know, one of the stories we actually explore in the film is that I'd never heard this story, but that um, my father had dreams, maybe, and I don't know how real they were, but he used to love to sing, he used to love movies, and you had dreams of um, him and his but him and a buddy had dreams of becoming actors, and that I'd never heard that story ever, and that to me was interesting, just to kind of ref to you know reflect back on my own yeah life, um, because my mom didn't want it to be an actor, but so I was like, was there something there that we had a connection there that I just never knew, and that was somehow passed to me in a way I don't know, so I'm still kind of thinking about those things now. And I know, I know he's, you know, uh, impacted my life in a lot of ways now. And it's just kind of fun to see all the different ways that maybe he has impacted me without me even knowing. Right. And it's probably a really nice thing for your mom too to realize to see you relating to her more like she may have feared this all of all of your life that you know, what would happen when you know, Danny's gonna have questions and he's gonna eventually meet him maybe and yeah. whatever but then here it is it actually brought you maybe connected the two of you more rather than which is so interesting which is a nice thing yeah yeah i hope so i mean like so she's actually in this film which is uh yeah i think part of my fear with all of this was uh, hurting my family i i just i i had such a fear about that and i still continue to have that feel uh that fear you know um so it was interesting because a couple of years ago, I think she was the, the first one when I was telling her I was meeting up with my dad and I want to write about this and kind of figure out this story. And she was the first one who was like, um, I think it's time for you to tell your story, you know? Oh, and amazing. I was so worried. I've always been worried that like, am I going to hurt her? I, I, is she, how is she going to feel about this? And it's just been interesting to me to see that she was like, you know, go for it, do it. Yeah. Um, so uh, that was really helpful in this process, but it also made me realize like, again, like how much I think uh, just by not asking, I was not asking, not talking about it. I had built up this idea of what she might say and what she, how she might feel and 
maybe that wasn't totally true, you know? Yeah. I think the more you yeah. have, con when I say you, I mean people in general, not just you. When we have conversations in our head and we kind of are working through scenarios and assuming that the more we get deeper into something that's you often not true at all like we build this narrative about how somebody yeah. else feels or what somebody else is thinking and it's really not at all what they're you know what they re how they really feel or what they're really thinking so <laughs> it doesn't surprise yeah. me that you thought this one way and then you're and that's surprising me. you that's like totally me like uh, i'll give you an example recently of my wife and i and how we differ um i'll build up this whole story uh in my head about why i should or shouldn't do something and uh, we were uh, we were at a Krispy Kreme donut, <laughs> and my daughter wanted a donut, right? So we go to a Krispy Kreme donut, and we're watching all the donuts um, on the track. You know, uh, this is actually in Times Square, and we're watching yeah, where all they the glaze the, them, yeah, yeah, where they glaze them, and it's amazing. We're watching the donuts, and and we're seeing like you know the uh, the sugar waterfall, and it's amazing. And then we see the donuts in the case, right? And my daughter goes up to ask for a donut. And they immediately go to grab a donut in the case, right? And um, and I was going to be kind of cool with that, but um, my wife had mentioned like maybe we maybe what about one of the ones on the that are fresh that are right there, right? And then I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask for one of those donuts, right? I'm just gonna do this, right? And I'm like, excuse me, um, is it possible for her? my daughter to grab a donut, a fresh donut that's like on the, 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 donut, the donut trail and thinking that like this is going to end terribly. They're going to be like, those are not untouchable. Um, you have to get the ones in the case. That's actually for the performance, the donut show, um, <laughs> you know, or, uh, you know, for the exclusive members of the Krispy Kreme Club, you know, whatever it is. Right. And, you know, uh, the employee was like, sure, just grab the donut off and gave it to my daughter. She's like, sweet. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I felt like a warrior. I felt like a <laughs> champion. And, and to my wife, I would have been like, well, you could just do that. You could just ask right. questions like that. If she says no, fine. But but I think that's what it takes for me sometimes is a nudge. And it takes, um, um, I don't like to disrupt too much. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, uh, but that was one of those moments where like, oh, it's it's good to be like, a, have a healthy nudge. And I'm just like, so thankful I have that in right. my life you know yeah. i think also it's interesting because without that they also say like you get what you ask for in life right so that's that's mm -hmm. a small example but it's a perfect example right if you didn't ask for it she would have never gotten that donut but you she just did and it's like right but even on on the larger level if you ask if you don't ask for something for opportunity you you know you're probably not going to get it but if you do you may surprise yourself at what you get so but here you are with a career that's so successful like and you don't like to disrupt you don't like to whatever but that's i think that's a, a tricky act to to get far as far as you have without wanting to rock the boat or are you different it at work <sighs> Oh, that's a good question. I think I'm pretty selective about what I ask for, okay. for sure. In my mind, I'm always like, I don't need to ask for that, or I don't, I don't need to push for that. Uh, that's unnecessary. Ooh, this one is worth it. Um, so there's a, there's a little bit of that dance in my mind of, uh -huh. is is this worth the fight? You know, I'm so like very what? much like, a, oh. Like an acting job that I love. Like if I feel like there's a character that I'm like, um, uh, there was this indie film um, a few years ago that when I read the script, I was like, oh, I really feel like I'm the right person to tell this story. And so I just made that known to my agents and to my manager. And I had a meeting with the producer and I just, I told them all the reasons why. And I was like, I will fight for this one thing. And it worked out. Um, but it had to feel i had to feel super passionate about it and had to feel like this is a battle that i'm very confident about that i know that i am um with my full heart diving into this but i also have reasons to back it up i could i could go into a debate with this one oh, okay. so it takes me a little it's bit the of armor that. again you had like it's the armor. the armor it takes me a little bit to be like okay here are the three reasons arguments why Here's what they might call a counter with. And here are my two counters to their counter. Well, that's <laughs> and very I can, good. Sometimes I can go through that. And if I feel like, okay, I can get to level three in this game or whatever it is that I put in my mind, we're good. Um, 
but yeah, it's, it, that's, that's hard for me to have like everyday moments where I just ask for stuff that always feels um, difficult for me. It's always felt uh -huh. difficult for me. Yeah. So you're not one of those people who is constantly calling your agent. Like, what have you got for me? I mean, you have steady gigs, so you don't need to anyway, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, sometimes they, they might tell you sometimes if I'm feeling like what's going on with this, with the situation, I just feel anxious about it, but generally, no, I feel too guilty. I think I grew up feeling guilty <laughs> about all these things. I still feel guilty about, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm un uncomfortable with like fame. I'm uncomfortable with all these, these things. And I always feel like it's, I wouldn't say I always feel like sometimes I feel like some of this stuff is just can go away at any moment and I'm not deserving in some ways. And, uh, there's this, there's those elements there. Yeah. I grew up Catholic. I grew up with a, a lot of these sort of like, I would say traditional like elements of guilt in my, yeah. in my life. And, and, you know, and being just very grateful and quiet. Um, I think that to me is something I, I took from my grandparents growing up is trying not to complain too much, trying mm -hmm. to be very grateful about certain things. Um, and yeah, and I, I could see that now in my everyday life, you know, yeah. when I'm like having this battle about a donut. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Where sometimes I'm like, it's just a donut. Just right, ask right. Danny. A small exercise is going to be really reap rewards though long term. You know, that donut was the perfect little exercise for realizing, yes, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to actually say things or ask for things more often. Yes, so fame, yeah, you said you're yeah. not comfortable with fame. So well, like, are, so people recognize you, I'm guessing, right? Is that like, is it people who recognize you all over? Is it the things that you get from being famous? Like, what is it about fame that makes you uncomfortable? Mm. I don't know. I, I think it's, I love, um, I love being able to connect with people through art. I think that's like, a gift that I didn't realize how rewarding it would feel. Uh, so that's something to me that is like, just wonderful. So if I meet someone and they're like, Hey, I saw this episode of community mm -hmm. and uh, me and my best friend are just like you and uh, your best friend. And we're, we connect with Troy and Abed and we were going through this difficult time in school or with isolation and you helped us get through it. And that to me feels like, Oh wow. Profound and wonderful and unexpected. And um, I feel just very, very grateful for that, you know? But sometimes I do feel caught off guard when I'm just like um, recognized on the street with my kids or something. It just, it's an unusual feeling and I don't know how to handle it sometimes. And this is another thing my wife has helped me with where people will say things like, oh, you look familiar. And I don't know what to say back, you know? Uh, you know? Um, and, and I think it's all part bundled with my childhood of like, I don't want to feel special. I, I, I want, um, you know, but at the same time, it is, uh, I, I guess I have to get better about it, of, of recognizing that it's just part of my job, you know, is mm -hmm. that I get to, to, to connect with people in their living rooms. And, you know, I, I think part of me is always just like, uh, how do I handle that? I don't know, especially with my kids. I don't know how to make it normal. I mm -hmm. want them. I want them to feel like this is normal. Um, and so, I, usually, you know, it's it's just me building up the story in my head of like, how do I behave in this situation? I just want to make sure that um, you know that I'm that I'm I'm doing the best to be kind and see people. Uh, but at the same time, it, it's it's it could be odd when you're just like you know. Um, at the dentist and someone recognizes you and your mouth is open, you know, yeah. <laughs> they start you asking know, you questions. Like, I'm vulnerable. I'm right. vulnerable right now. You know, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe people get comfortable with that. Uh, eventually. I don't know. I don't know. I so don't I, think I, something I, uh, look, I can tell you uh, my show is really famous. So I've interviewed a lot of famous people and I can tell you that by and large, I don't, I don't know many people who have gotten comfortable with it. I mean, some more than others. And I've, I've heard from a lot of people like you, where they appreciate the fact that it exists or else they wouldn't be doing what they do, right? They wouldn't be able to. Mm -hmm. Um, but I do, I don't think any, I don't really can't think of anybody who's purely comfortable with it so but on top of i feel like for you too because you don't like to right you, you want to be just right all the time so it's like a double yeah. it's one yeah. pressure on top of the other so i could see where it would be super uncomfortable 
I'm going to turn it to one of the things like that you like about it, which is not as profound as the example you just gave me. But so I was watching Community and I'm talking to my friend Josh Miley about it because Josh loves Community and he's just like the paintball episodes, the paintball episodes. Oh. So I OK, that is such joy. So I watched one last night. I watched the season one paintball episode with my son. And yes, oh. I mean, just pure joy for both of us. So yeah, that feels good, right? Oh. That you know, that people yeah. from your art are just dying, laughing, appreciative, right? Yes. Uh, yes. I mean, I really feel uh, and so we actually uh, well, I'm glad I'm glad you were able to connect over that and watch it. That's yeah. I would say top three episodes of Community for me all time. That one, paintball. Oh, episode. the first one or that or the first one. Okay. The first the second one is amazing too. But the first one was just like I felt like our world was now like, what is even happening here? We're doing slow motion shots of me jumping off a wall. Um, Justin Lin directed that episode, and I just remember him setting up the shot for me to like do this slow motion jump off a wall as I was shooting. Yes. Uh, you know, and then I say, you know, come with me if you don't want paint on your clothes. Um, and I just, I just, I, I couldn't believe we were able to, to get away with it. That's, I felt like we were getting away with something. And, and just seeing the technical aspect of the shots we were trying to create within a comedy, an ensemble comedy, I, I was, I was getting to live, you know, like my, um, I just felt like a kid, you know, I was like watching action movies, but also now being in an action movie, but at the same time laughing with friends and it kind of was hitting all those, those spots. So, uh, I watched community with my kids, all this being said, I was, I was watching community with my kids for the first time over the pandemic as well. And it was just wonderful. And I hadn't seen it in a long time to watch it through their eyes this time too. And, and to be able to relive some of those moments and, um, and see how excited they got uh, in some of these moments. It was like, it felt really, really special. So yeah, I'm very, very thankful for that. And um, to be able to share something like that with people and uh, that fe truly feels like such a gift, yeah. especially right now to uh, just kind of bring some joy into people's lives for sure. Yeah. Okay. So your kids, what did they like, were they weirded out? Were they impressed? Did they look at you any differently when they were watching or did they kind of remove themselves from the fact that that's dad? I think a lot of this is just truly based on uh, how wonderful of a parent my wife is, is that they're not weirded out at all. They're just sort of like, oh yeah, that's, that's dad. Uh, so what were you doing there? Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. So then now let's go watch something else. Like dad, go make us some waffles. You know, I think there's like a, it's, it's, it feel it's very normal to them. Uh -huh. It's kind of what I do. I try to show them stuff. They've been on set. I show them pictures of being on set. Uh -huh. You know, um, oh, that's cool. Of them on set when they were little, when they were babies. Yeah, so when they were babies, they were born um, in the middle of season three of Community, and um, so I have some photos of me bringing the babies to set and the cast members. Um, we have this Halloween episode, and it's pretty great. There's a bunch of us. Uh, under, we're Donald and I are dressed as Calvin and Hobbes. Um, there's like some other, yeah, and all of us are holding the baby with their, when they're babies, and and. It's just like this odd photo of the kids, uh, but it's beautiful. And I think it helped kind of like put perspective to uh, my job, my work, the show, yeah. who they are. And like, um, you know, and like, you know, for instance, the Russo brothers held our baby shower, the, who are the directors of community. Okay. And so there's, we're still very close as a group. Um, and so I think it's, it's normalized it. We go to Joel McHale's house quite a bit. Okay. Um, still and, uh, or then he's still, yeah. Still. Yeah. What do you do yeah. there? He's got a pool, which, <laughs> which over the last year he's let us use his yard. Um, and that was like a huge gift. Um, and yeah, he's just, um, it, it, that's been awesome for him and, uh, his family has just been, you know, just wonderful about giving us like, uh, I don't know, just like another family. He's been, we've been to his oh. house for new years, a number of years. So I think we have this kind of like true set family that's kind of led into a real life family. So I think that makes this all not feel super unusual for them right. when they watch the show because they know some of those people, they know the people personally, you mm -hmm. know, and it just kind of feels like, uh, like we are just in our living room, you know, like right. we're, you know, doing a regular dance show. So that's, it's been really cool to, to yeah. see it again, but also it's been, it's been funny rewatching episodes and being like, okay, this one's maybe not so appropriate for you or this one is, or I realize I have to explain, <laughs> right. ah, I got to explain right. this, this meta stuff here, which is, 
They're growing up fast. They're growing up real fast. Yes, but when you think about it, I think a lot of us watch TV shows that were a little bit too advanced for us with some of the content anyway. So it's like, hey, this is just, kids have been doing this for a long time, but I know what you mean. I don't, well, sometimes I get into certain episodes with my kids. I'm like, you know, maybe we'll just skip to the next one. <laughs> I'll look at the beginning. I'll see at the top left where it'll say like, okay, what are what's some of the content warnings that I have to think about before? We definitely had to skip the STD fair episode. Uh -huh. My wife and I were like, oh, okay, let's skip that, that one. Right. There's, there's a few of them where we're like, yeah, oh, uh, you know. Right. Um, just not ready for their, I know they're going to ask questions. There's, they're just incredibly inquisitive, both my children. And mm -hmm. so they're, they're going to ask, you know, right. and I, in my head, I have to be like, okay, am I ready? Am I ready? No. Uh, so yeah, maybe in a couple of years, they're still, you know, not quite ready. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So, uh, okay. I also want to say one thing about, so I put it on social media yesterday. I was like, you know, I just booked Danny, you know, and any questions or whatever. So I did have a bunch of fan questions come in, but I am going to tell you just one reaction that I got, which was a lot okay. of people were so appreciative of Abed and like just how you being on camera representing him in that way. And people have such a warm feeling about him. And I don't, this really isn't even a question. I just wanted to say it and I'm sure you've heard it a million times over, but that probably makes you feel pretty good, right? That you, you know that people really are appreciative and respond to him as a character. I, yes, yes. I think it meant so much to me to play Abed. Uh, I, I think Abed is just such a wonderful character and to be able to play someone that is so unique and that hadn't been seen in television in many ways before. I took that very seriously and I really wanted to make sure that I was doing the best I could um, to to make sure Abed was not a caricature in any ways mm -hmm. and wasn't taken for granted. And um, so to be able to, to connect with people and that uh, it, it feels really, really good. You cool, know? Yeah. cool. And yeah. um, I just want to touch on Mythic Quest too. So now you're mm -hmm. on Mythic Quest and that's, it's, yep. So you did two seasons already. Is there a third season? Am I getting my facts yes. wrong? Yes. Okay. There, uh, we haven't started it yet, but yeah, we're about to start season three pretty soon here. Cool. So that feel, how does yeah. that feel that you went from, because I wonder too, after something like mm -hmm. Community, are you, did you kind of worry like this is never going to happen again or no? Like meaning, uh, yeah. yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't want to put words in your yeah. mouth. Yeah, no. Um, I think we knew something, it was special. I think, you know, I feel fortunate because I think we knew it was special when we were shooting it in many ways. So there was this sort of, and we were frequently almost canceled. So I think there was this idea right. that like, this, this shows we're having a great time, but this is not gonna last. So there was always this feeling of like, let's just go out with a bang and, and have as much fun as possible and be as creative and just see what happens, right? So that, that feeling like really kind of spilled into the show and the performances and how we were on set. It just felt like, let's just, let's just see what else we could do here. Um, because it really felt like we were doing something new and different and exciting. And I just knew sitting around that table with everyone around the table, it was just such an incredibly talented group that I couldn't believe I was sitting with this, this mix of, of um, each of them were just, uh, just everybody around the table, just brilliant yeah. people. Um, and so, yeah, there was this idea when it was ending many times that this is probably never going to happen again. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, which is like a bummer in some ways, but also kind of like, oh, like, wow, cool that it's, we got to do this thing, yeah. you know? So, yeah. I, I, and then Mythic Quest came about actually because Megan Gans, who was a writer on Community, she wrote the bottle episode, for instance, in the uh. first, uh, in Community. Um, and she had contacted me about this role in Mythic Quest that she was like, I think you'll enjoy playing this character. It's not like Abed. He is very different. He's kind of a villain. Uh -huh. He is uh, sort of this manipulator. Uh, and I was like, I'm in. This sounds amazing and exciting. And I, I love Megan. And I think she's just an incredibly talented writer. And and it's the Always Sunny in Philadelphia team. And I've, I've always loved their sure. comedy and what they do. So I thought this would just be something really cool to dive into. And it's been that. It's been a wonderful experience. The ensemble is phenomenal. Um, it's the same thing. It's like, we're not, I'm not looking around a table this time. My character tends to be sort of this outsider. So I look at everybody usually through plexiglass or through uh -huh. these long walk and talks, but 
it's a wonderful ensemble. Right. Um, and it, it feels very special too within this group. And, you know, we were able to film during the pandemic, which also felt special because I felt like we were trying new things and creating. And I think a lot of that is because of Rob McElhaney and, and Megan Gans really, um, you know, taking big risks during this time and being like, we have a pretty cool special bunch. And um, I think they have a lot of trust and they put a lot of trust in their actors. So it's been really, really special. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just thankful we get to go back uh, soon and for sure. see what else happens. Yeah. Yeah. Another shout out to another friend. I was talking to my friend Beth before we jumped on today and she was like, okay. my sons are upset. I, she's like, who are you talking to? I said, Danny Pudi. He, she said, oh, my sons are obsessed with Mythic Quest. So. Oh, God. Yeah. Nice. There you go. Um, so well, how do you feel when you're not working? Like, especially, I mean, with or without the pandemic, is that challenging for you as a creative person and somebody who wants everything to be just right? Yeah, that's been, that's been a challenge for me always, I think, always. is what do I do in my downtime? What do I do with downtime? You know, running ends up being a lot of it. I end up diving into to that, running and and reading and and like trying to like you know try and find ways to be at peace as is really that's been a challenge for me i'm also like i love people i love being around people mm -hmm. I, I, uh, I i feed off people's energy i like that and so that's it's definitely been a bit of a challenge for me over the last couple of years to to not have that i will say i've been fortunate because i've had work creative work to dive into and I just realized how valuable that is for me to be diving into a character, exploring a story. Storytelling for me is really, um, it just feels very purposeful. It just always feels like, oh, like I, I love diving into a story and then that could be reading or it could be literally working on um, a character, you know, um, like in Mythic Quest. And um, so, yeah, but yeah, it is yeah. definitely challenging for me to rest. Yeah, yeah. I get it. And yeah. as an actor, like that's just the nature of it, that you're going to have these periods where you're not working and you yeah. can go from like not zero to 60, but 60 to zero kind of. Yes. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's always tricky. I mean, I, I think I think I know it. I could feel when I'm like, OK, it's been like three or four weeks. Uh, I need to create something I need to create. Yeah. I feel like I, I feel like that. I got to do something. So you know, that could be anything. It could literally be like, okay, I'm going to go and I need to go like make a, 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 a caramelized leek tart. I need to create something. Ooh, that sounds good. <laughs> yeah, I just made one. It was really good. It was really oh. good. Um, I just found a recipe. But I think like I have this sort of like, I got to do something. I got to, uh -huh. you know, um, and that helps me kind of like, you know, and you know, in my everyday life. But I, I think a big part of it too is just is me running. I know if I run or if I get some exercise in the day, mm -hmm. I know that also is like, right. Like, you know, like a brain bath feels really good. Yeah. Plus you're outdoors and there are studies that say like not only being physically active, but being active outdoors in nature, if you can get yourself into nature, that's like a really calming thing. That's it. Trees. I like, will look at yeah. trees. I need to like, just look at a tree and be like, that thing is there. The tree is still there. It's like, oh, that feels good, you know? It's grounding for you. Yes, I yes. totally get it. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, shoot. I just was going to ask you something. I completely lost my train of thought. Again, um, I'm going to have Running. to skip it, I guess. Well, leek tart. I'll send you the recipe for leek the tart. Oh, yeah. Send leek. me the recipe for the leek yeah. tart. <laughs> oh, you know what? That did remind me. So you said that you, I'm going to tell you why. It's a weird roundabout thing, but the there's leaks are that thing. Do you know the show Emily in Paris on Netflix? There was, do you know I that haven't show? seen it, but I know it. But it I haven't seen you're it. not missing anything. Yeah. But in a recent episode, they were focusing on leaks. So that is actually reminding me. So you said that you read also. Are you reading anything good? And are you watching anything good on TV right now? Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, I'm a huge fan of graphic novels, reading a lot of graphic novels. I just finished uh, this graphic novel series called Descender. Loved it. Love okay. it. Descender. Um, there, and I'm just starting Ascender, which is the sequel, prequel. Um, and I'm excited about that. Saga is another one. Um, a new episode or a new, um, uh, a new chunk of the story is coming out in January, which I'm very excited about. That's okay. phenomenal storytelling. I love it. 
and um, I'm almost done with Dune. I've been reading Dune over the last couple of months. I'm a, it, it's a big book, but I, I'm loving it. I, I've decided like, I'm okay, I'm gonna watch Dune the movie, mm -hmm. but first I'm gonna finish the book um, and I'm almost done. It's taking me a little bit of time. So that's been, that's been kind of fun. Um, what else now? Series, what I'm watching? Um, Succession, yes. Had to watch Succession. Um, what did you think of the finale? I just have to ask. I mean, I I'm going to say it. just. I, oh, okay. okay. Where are you? Okay. So I haven't. Uh, I'm just started season three. Just started it. So okay. uh, yeah, I was catching up one season two. Yeah, so I can't. Look, but I'm going to watch that. Um, where my son and I actually have gotten into anime lately, so we've been watching a lot of anime, which has been fun. And okay. we're watching Hunter x Hunter right now, mm -hmm. and Arcane on Netflix, which is really cool arcane oh, really okay yeah yeah um and then we actually just finished as a family the good place which loved loved it it was re exciting it was really fun good comedy that was a lot of fun great ensemble i really enjoyed it yeah okay cool so i'm gonna ask you a couple of last questions one of my favorite questions but i may adapt it a little bit for you because your wife is yeah. sounds amazing and also i just want to jump back to the fact that I'm so interested in the fact that you chose her as a life partner because mm -hmm. she is bringing out all these things in you that aren't necessarily your comfort zone and your mm -hmm. default, but they help you grow into who you're appreciating you're becoming. Mm. Which is very, that's a very interesting thing to know about yourself. Like, that you mm. opted into that instead of opting out. It's a healthy thing is what I'm trying to tell you. Okay, good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I like, it's funny. I, it's, um, I have a very uh, vivid memory of our first meeting, my wife and I, and in it, she's just sitting in a chair very comfortably. And she's very quick to laugh and quick to smile. And in that, like, that's kind of like my memory of her right away is how grounded she was. And how that and that that's just like a good feeling in me and i think i knew right away i was like oh i don't have that yeah like, i don't i want to be around that more like i felt good you know so anyways but that's i think it's kind of part of that where there's something intriguing about it but also just feels mm -hmm. really good to be to be near her it just does yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, very interesting. And like I said, mm -hmm. it's just my therapy view, my therapist perspective is that that is a healthy thing that you sought that out. And even though, right, it's not your natural inclination, you saw it as a good thing for yourself and you're going with it, growing with it. So not shutting it down, you know, the, the mm. fact that she's teaching you how to be this way. So bravo for you and oh. bravo for her. Thanks for making me realize that. Uh, <laughs> again, these are things that I feel maybe I yeah. can feel these things. I don't. I can't necessarily put them into words, but that's. Um, I think I feel that around her for sure. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Okay, so here's my last mm -hmm. question, and I'll kind of adapt it towards her as well and your decision that you made. So, my last question has two parts. The first one is, what's the image that people generally have of you? And the second part is, how does that differ from who you are in real life? And the way that I was kind of going to bring your wife in was like, how how would she describe you? So why don't we make it three parts and start with, Okay. Oh, we'll separate them. So you don't have to remember okay. everything. Um, oh, I forgot to ask you about Larry King too, but I guess we can skip uh, that. That's such a funny story. How was he as an interviewer, by the way? I love Larry. Um, I, I love Larry and I appreciate every time I got a chance to talk to him. Uh, it, it was such a fun interview because I, I don't think it would go in any way that I could ever predict. And I don't think there was any, which was, it was nice, but it was just like, I felt like whatever he was interested in at the very moment, he would, he would ask, you know, um, which was, it just kind of felt like in, in some ways it was like, just you're zigzagging, you know? Uh, so it would lead to, to moments like the one that I had with him, which were completely unexpected. <laughs> um, so that, that was just, just always really fun, you know? Mm. Um, yeah. So anyways, but I, uh, he was, he was always really wonderful with me and, he brought me on. I had a. I was lucky and fortunate to have a couple conversations with him, and I just I, they, again they always zigged and zagged, and we had a lot of fun. Yeah, I like that. That's my preferred style, anyway. That's my yeah. preferred kind of conversation. So yes. I'm into that. So that's yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay, so let's get back to that other question, the three-parter. Okay. So what is the image, like how do you think people see you in general, mm. the image they have of you? I think that's changed over time. I think that, I think, I used to think that just people thought like I was peculiar or would see me and they'd be like, who's that kind of quirky odd guy? And, you know, a lot of it would be because I'd be like, mm, you damn her like making goofy faces or doing sketch comedy or improv. So that was part of what I was doing every day. So I would think that that translated to how people saw me on the street or see what, you know, um, now it's different because I think that now people will sometimes recognize me and they think I look familiar. So there's this like this familiarity kind of thing happening where a lot of people are like, Hey, do we go to the same foot doctor? You know, and I'll, you know, there's that kind of thing. So it's yeah. like, I'm like approachable. I feel like people see me and they'd be like, he looks kind of approachable and friendly. Yeah. I think that's kind of the feeling I, I, I generally, I think probably create in, in social settings, which I like. And I hope that is the case. Yeah. Um, I feel that for sure. I think you give okay. off that sense of um, like, I sense that you're a good person and you're, it feels very natural, I think, to talk to you and you feel likable. Um, like you would be somebody who, I would like to get to know in real life. You know what I mean? I bet that's how most yeah. people feel around you. Yeah, yeah. I think that's like my, um, I like that feeling too. I like yeah. creating that feeling, you know? And, you know, I think sometimes my wife will be like, okay, it's it's time to go. It's time to, time to go. Like, <laughs> it's, if we're at a party, usually I'm one of the last people there. Yes. You know? And my wife will be like, and we're done. Let's yes. let's wrap it up, Danny. But I'm like, I'm having such a good yes. time. Like, yeah. Right. By the way, remember parties? Oh, uh, yeah. Quite a memory. Uh, I know. They were such a good time. They were right. such a good time. <laughs> They'll come back. They'll come back. They will. Okay, so part two is who are you really? So how would you describe yourself? So, you know, I've been taking all these personality tests, like Enneagram and all those things. I uh, And I think uh, Myers-Briggs, I think I did that one too. And I forget which one's which, but I did the one where I'm a seven. I think that's the Enneagram. Yeah, the Myers-Briggs is four letters, four initials. Yeah, I feel like I'm like a campaigner. Is that right in there? ENFP oh, no, or something like that? Yeah, ENF, are you an EF, ENFP too? That's what I am. Are you an ENFP? Oh, yes. Okay, so I'm gonna have to do a quick check here because I feel like I did that. That's called. Is there a that's name the to that Meyer, one? That's the Myers Briggs. Okay. Oh, are you saying that's what? What is there a name to the? Yeah, ENFP? was there a name to that one? I okay. don't know. So it's funny because I was I was doing when I was a therapist. I remember I kind of did a little career coaching at the beginning of that, and that was my favorite tool. And I had like a mini version of it. I probably was not authorized to even conduct the test, and I probably didn't <laughs> have the license for the test or anything like that. But I was like, this thing is really cool. It's going to teach yeah. people about themselves. So I would give it to them. And so I think I had the mini version. I don't even know. But now it's funny because it's become popular again. And that was years ago that I used that. But I do love that test. It's fun. Uh, do you learn okay. about yourself? You really do. So I'll I'll probably have to tell you afterward when I find out what I was. Okay. That'll be a, f a fun addition. But yeah, so in both of those, though, it was elements and qualities that I kind of was like, oh, it helped us. My wife and I'd be like, oh, yeah, understand each other's, you know, needs yes. and all that kind of stuff. It really does help with that. So for sure, I am an extrovert. I love being around people. Um, I love... Uh, I think with the seven, I'm like drawn to sort of new experiences and and those kind of things. And, um, you know, I think in some ways my wife's a little bit more introverted. So it's kind of a nice balance. Yeah. You, you know, but I think when I when I've been kind of looking through all these things, I've sort of realized how much I actually really also I don't think I'm a full on extrovert. I think I am. There is some. I like to be alone a little bit mm -hmm. too. And I think I've, I've kind of realized that over time. I kind of like, after like being out and about and with people and new experiences, I really like a little bit of time to just kind of quiet and, you know, and, mm -hmm. and that's been something interesting through this process too, to just realize like, oh, I actually really do like that. I like going for a run by myself. I like kind of right. going on a trail run or being, you know, in the woods or whatever. 
Yeah, yeah it's so weird, but I do think... I do think you can be both. I remember when I mm -hmm. took it, I was on the fence. I was like maybe one or two answers away from being an INFP. So that's an introvert, right? Versus extrovert, okay. ENFP. But I think the same thing. So I, it's funny because as I get older, I find myself being more of an extrovert. I've always mm. been an introvert in a way. Like I've always liked my alone time. I like to do things by myself. I'll, I'll go places. I'll go, I'll travel by myself. I mean, I don't really do it any, anymore now with kids and my husband, but yeah. I like to do things by myself. I like to be on my own, but at the same time, I love being with people. So I think you can be both. I think they're just two sides of it. And I they totally can coexist. Agree. Yep. Yeah. I agree. I like nothing more than traveling than going eating alone at a restaurant. Love it. Yeah. It's like, it's <laughs> and I think it's a little bit of that. That feels like really good to me, you know, like being in a new place, but also being by myself with a book. In a, yes. in a cozy little place that feels really nice yeah love it love it yeah okay so mm -hmm. that so you would describe yourself as all okay all of those things and then how do you think your wife would describe you remind me what her name is again bridget bridget okay so how would bridget, bridget. describe you oh okay that's a, that's a good question danger danger daniel <laughs> um <laughs> I think she would say, yeah, I'm gregarious. Uh, she might, she definitely like, she'll be like, you're a seven, you know, you love new adventure. You love travel. I love travel. Um, I, um, I, I think I'm drawn to the, to sort of uncomfortable new experiences. I'm okay with being like, let's get on a flight and go here. And then like, like take, you know, go to a different time zone. And then, you know, where, I'm probably, uh, I think she would say in some ways, I'm a little bit more restless than she is, uh -huh. you know, so I've had to work at that. I think she, I think she would say, I hope she would say that, uh, <laughs> that um, I, um, I love, I think it's important to be kind to people and I, I love, I appreciate kindness. I think she'd say too, I'm sensitive. Um, I tend to be a little bit more, just more sensitive, I, I think. Um, and I, I have, you know, that's something I've, I've learned from her to kind of like not take things as personally. Um, you know, um, I, yeah, I think she would say like, I'm definitely like drawn to, I, I mean, we have a very clear division in some of the, uh, the TV shows we watch. So she would say like, you're definitely more into like sci-fi and that kind uh -huh. of genre and fantasy. You like the fantasy world elements, uh, where she's drawn way more into like indie romantic comedies, you right. know? And she'd be like, I definitely like to cry more than you do. She would probably say that. I'd be like, I completely agree there. <laughs> <laughs> you're well, you're more comfortable experiencing raw human emotion than I am. Um, I'm more comfortable um, experiencing raw human emotion if it's through the character of Jon Snow in Game of Thrones. Yeah. Like that kind of thing, you know. Right, so, right. It has to be couched in that other yeah, atmosphere. Uh, but I think she would probably say that I um, love to laugh and love to make people laugh and we have a good time laughing with each other. And I think that's kind of where definitely we both have a, uh, a common thing there, right? Okay. Okay, so very cool. So everybody should check out your film. Can you say like where everybody will find it? It's on Stellar. So uh, check out Running. It's um, a very personal story, something I created um, with my family and uh, uh, about my life and I'm excited for people to check it out on Stellar soon, maybe now. Okay, so that's that. And then if you can do a little something for me for social media. So just like look at the camera and you can say, hi, it's Danny Pudi. I just talked to Kara and whatever, whatever strikes you. Okay. And how, where, what's the, what are the channels? I don't even worry about all that. I'm just going to go on social media. So they already know that I'm there. Oh, okay. So okay. wherever they're watching, they're going to see. see. So I just want you the to have a natural... look at myself, Kara. Oh. You look gorgeous. Oh, no, thank you, Kara. Wait, did you really not look at yourself this whole time? That that would be amazing. Uh, I think I did for a while, uh, in the beginning, but now okay. I just first time in a long time. And then, cool. which is really, that's a feat for me, Kara. I appreciate that. That's great. Because I did the same thing. I was totally engrossed in what you were saying. So that's a good thing. It's a good sign. I like oh, that. Oh, good. We did it. Okay. Uh, hey, how's it going? I'm Danny Pudi. I just talked to Kara. We had a really good time. I tried not to be self-conscious and stare at my hair or my face. For the most part, it worked out. Anyways, I had a really fun time and I'm um, just talking about life. Okay, so question for you. How did you, mm -hmm. so I asked you a lot of questions and I know we talked about how you feel about questions and some of them were more yes. direct than others. I think a lot of them were pretty 
you know, like uh, maybe maybe different from what you're used to or what you might be prepared for. So how did it feel? Did it feel uncomfortable? Did it, was it okay? They felt really good. I mean, it's, I've been coming, you know, you know, you know, I've, I've seen a therapist and I've gone to therapy and I've, so some of this stuff has been part of this whole growth process as well is, is me being comfortable communicating or facing questions or answering questions. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. No, you seem like such a good guy, really. And you're uh, I, all good things. Like you kind of, I kind of get that vibe from you before, but after this talk, I really do feel that. So just a little feedback there. And I think you did really well answering my therapy type questions. <laughs> So Danny did send me his personality test results after we talked. And yes, we are both ENFPs. What are you? Email me at reallyfamouspodcast at gmail.com or hit me up on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. I'd love to hear from you. Remember to shop at Amazon using my link, amazon.com slash shop slash reallyfamous. And I thank you in advance for supporting the show. I'm Kara. Thanks for hanging out with Danny Pudi and me. Now, if you stick around for just a sec, here's a little bonus bit, just as Danny and I wrapped up. Okay, you will get an email. I'll also tell you about my, I need to research. I actually want to know more about my, am I ENFP or, yeah. So I'll send you about that info as well. It's important. I need to wrap that up. You definitely need to wrap that up, and we need to know that for sure because I do yeah. love that Myers Briggs test. So you don't even remember you don't remember the letters. You think it's ENFP though? I think it's ENFP. I I I feel like there was the word campaigner is in my mind. Okay, I'll find okay. out. Okay, so out. you'll send me yeah. an email. You'll do those things, and then I will uh, send you a mug. Perfect. Congratulations on your film, on everything, all your success, your personal success, your evolution right now, the stage you're in. I think it's amazing. I'm happy for you and. Uh, Congrats, and thanks for doing this. Thank you, Kara. Can't wait for my mug. I'll let you know what personality type I am. Okay, perfect. I'll, I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Danny. All right, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.